Today I'm going to show you my go-to technique when using embossing folders, and that is going to be ink blending over the embossed area. Embossing folders are really great because they are fairly reasonably priced. There's a huge assortment out there, and they are a great way to add texture or subtle interest to your background. Hi everyone, I'm Mindy Egan and welcome to my channel. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share the video and drop me a comment down below at the end of the video and let me know your favorite technique with embossing folders. The 3D embossing folder that I'm going to be using today is the Garden Spires from Simon Says Stamp. Now before I do any embossing with this folder, the first thing I want to do is ink blend a background. Now, when I was going through my color choices, I'm going to be picking a set of colors that are fairly light, and then I'm going to pick another set of colors that are going to be a couple shades darker. So this first color that I'm laying down is going to be bubblegum ink. These are all from Simon Says Stamp. I am blending on the ink about a third of the way up. So starting from one end, blending about a third of the way up, so it's going to fade off a little bit. And then I'm going to bring in Melon Ink. This one I'm kind of starting about in the middle and I'm going to blend into that previous color, the Bubblegum Ink, and then blend up past a little bit towards the other side of the cardstock. I have one more color I want to add on here so that I have three shades of a gradient going down the front of my card. Now this last color is going to be Lemonade. Now you're gonna see that as I'm blending with my blending brushes, it doesn't seem very seamless. I am blending on Hammer Mill cardstock, which is a super smooth cardstock, but what I'm going to do to help blend these colors together is go back through each of the colors. So I'm bringing that melon color back in, I'm adding a little bit more ink, kind of helping blend between the yellow and the orange, and then bringing the bubble gum back in. That's kind of one of my go-to things when I'm ink blending. I don't always show it, but I definitely do it. Now that I have this first step done, I'm going to place my cardstock in that 3D embossing folder. Now you're gonna need to look at your die cutting machine on how they use 3D embossing folders and you may need to experiment. In my case, I'm using the Platinum 6. I have the A plate, the B plate, I have my embossing folder, and then I also added two shims of cardstock, and the cardstock was about 110 pound in weight, and that seemed to work really well for me. Now here is where the magic begins. So I had picked out a couple shades darker for each of those layers of the pink, orange, and yellow. I will have those colors listed at the top of the screen, but the magic of this is using a flat blending brush and going over those embossed areas with those colors. What's happening is that because I'm using a flat blending brush, it's really kind of skimming over those embossed areas on the cardstock. Not a lot of ink is transferring to the background. It's really just hitting those raised areas, and that's really making them stand out. So as I go through this, I can kind of also look that maybe I want a little more of that orange up towards the yellow. It's going to probably make somebody look at your card and go, how did they do that? Because you have orange over that yellow background. You could see here, I'm kind of just brushing that orange up into there. Now, if I would have saved a little bit more room at the bottom, I probably could have brought my pink up, but I'm still really happy with how this turned out and is definitely just one of my go-to things that I like to do when using 3D embossing folders. I'm bringing in the Soaring Layered Bird from Simon Says Stamp. This is a one piece die set. It cuts all of these pieces out at once. I die cut them out of white cardstock. And then I have there off on the left hand side, the front of my packaging so I can see how everything layers together. And I like to use a pick and stick tool to kind of help pick up those smaller pieces. Now, when I laid it out, I just kind of got the basic idea of how my bird's going to look. I decided to kind of continue with the rainbow colors. So I brought in a few more colors to color that in. I believe the body was celery, 
Then I did sea foam for the wings, and I'm also going to add sea foam to the tail. Now, as I was playing with my bird and kind of putting it together, I decided to leave off the smaller pieces. There's smaller pieces for the top of each wing and also the top of the head. Instead of adding those, you can see they're off on the left-hand side. I did them in purple. I didn't really care for how it looked. So I am just going to bring a little bit of lilac to the tops of the wings. And I love when purple kind of overlaps with blue. There's just something super magical about it. Now I'm going to come in and start layering my bird together. I started with the tail because the body overlaps the tail. So that was easy enough to put together. This one wing here, there is a little bit of it that overlaps the body. I went ahead and attached that. But this other wing on the right hand side is a little tricky. I don't think it attached to anything. So I placed post-it tape over the front, flipped it over, and added some of the Spellbinders Best Ever Craft Tape to the back. Then I could remove that post-it tape without tearing my cardstock. So that's a great way to put your bird together if your pieces don't necessarily overlap. I'm trimming my background down so it is going to measure three and a half by four and three quarters inches. I loved that bright colorful background which would have looked great all on its own but I wanted to bring in some white space which is a, going to be a white border around it. So I went ahead trimmed out two more pieces of white cardstock and layered that behind my panel to add some stability and a little dimension and then I'm bringing in some of these starry colors. I added a couple drops to this kind of white gold color and then also the white and I'm just going to add flicks to the background which is going to add some sparkle and shine. So as I bring you in for a closer look you can see all the beautiful splatter that I have on there and like I said this would be great as a card front all on its own. All you need to do is add a sentiment to it but I really wanted to bring in that bird. But for my sentiment, I will be using the etched greetings. I'm just going to stamp this on white cardstock using the Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. One of the reasons that I chose this is because I think it's just an absolutely beautiful sentiment. And I also really love the font changes on here. That kind of calligraphy style I thought really tied in to my background and then it had that simple sentiment underneath. I thought it was a great match versus a bold sentiment. There is a coordinating die to this stamp set so I die cut out the sentiment and I also die cut out about two or three more pieces so I could layer that together with my liquid glue. Now I'm using a tape runner adding that to the back of my embossed panel and adding this to a card front. This is measuring four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I have foam squares added behind my bird, which you can see I dropped. I kind of panicked for a second. I thought it was going to stick to my tabletop there, but I removed the backing of my foam squares and I can place this on the front of the card. I did make sure when I was putting on my foam squares, it kind of overlapped those connecting areas. Then for the sentiment, I added liquid glue. I'm going to place something heavy on it so it's going to sit for a minute or so and really adhere down to that raised background. I did think about bringing in some embellishments, but I thought the background and everything was busy enough. It's very colorful, very bright and cheerful. So I left the embellishments off and had just kind of the splatter in the background do the work for me. So that is my go-to technique when using 3D embossing folders. You can do this technique with any inks, any color and any embossing folder. All of the supplies that I used today's video are listed down below in the video description. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you again with another card making video very soon.